Welcome to another episode of Click It Roro After Midnight. Thank you again for joining us. Another episode of Roro After Midnight. As always, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Roro the Tanner. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel at a Filipino Tanner. And also, you can send your 50 cents via Venmo to at Roro the Tanner. I think you can send 50 cents or maybe just $1. I don't know. Just send anything. Okay. By the way, I have to acknowledge theme song written by yours truly and also my friend Marcus Cheval, also arranged by Marcus Cheval, who, whose wife is a very, very talented, very talented soprano whom I also know, Rebecca Cheval, who is going to be on my show in about two days. Thank you. And now, in case, just in case you are interested, it's down there. You just keep scrolling through that. Now, oh, we already have a comment. Oh, look at that. Looking cute as always. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Who again is Ryan? Oh, yeah, the one in Korea. Uh, white guy in Korea. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> now we go to our joke of the day. The joke of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, where's my... Oh, my God. Where is my... Sorry. I got to I gotta change uh, brands here. There it is. Thank you. Ah. Our joke of the day, ladies and gentlemen, is where do couples argue at the mall? At the feud court. Oh, girl. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't it? Isn't it? Anyway, so another uh, so, uh, section is Roro's hair of the day. Raro's hair of the day is BAM! Oh, look at that hair. So last week, hey you, what you doing? Hey you. So last week, I think I showed my hair that was red. So when the red hair grows out, the black roots come out. And I'm thinking, oh, ooh, it looks like an, an ombre. There you go. Mm. I like my ombres up here and down here. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so funny. Ah, anyway, what else? So, um, that was, by the way, that was from, uh, I forgot what year that was. I think December as well, but, um, our joke of the day, generously donated by my husband, Steven. You can follow him on Instagram at Steve Arino Hunter. And before I bring in my guests, I like to, well, you can't, you can do it without a mask. I'm just saying, wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, and use a sanitizer every time you leave your place, your apartment, your house. It doesn't matter. I mean, even if you're taking out the trash to the corridors, you have to, because you'll never know who's going to come out and they just sneeze. And then you say, mother. You know, you don't want to do that. So, ooh, so excited. I'm so excited about tonight. Okay, so now um, I'd like to do my usual intro of my guest, my new format. Oh, wait, we got some Steven. Oh, yay. Look at that. Glenn, hi there. Oh, that's so cool. So now we are now, I'm now going to introduce you to our guest. I always forget this. I have to remember this. There you go. There you go. Here they are, our guests for the night. Look at me. I'm the only one working this. Here they are, Miss America, the beautiful. You guys are live. Say hi, hi. everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, le, uh, so this, by the way, it's just at least you know, to my, it's it goes clockwise. Okay, we're gonna go clockwise at the moment. That's Amy Vice, Miss Maine, 
and Jacqueline Fontaine, Miss California, and Marisa Buchheit, Miss <laughs> Illinois. It's pronounced Buchheit or Buchheit. It really depends or if you're in the pageant realm or in the opera realm. So just saying. <laughs> anyway, you could follow them on Instagram, Amy at Amy Vice, Jackie at Jacqueline F. Make sure you get that spelling right, okay? And Marisa at Marisa Buchheit. Thank you very much. And that and they it the her their information will be there for the longest time ever. Now, let's start with, you know, just jumping in here. Let's start with uh Amy. So um, you know, just say hi and you know. So wh where are you calling from right now? Uh, uh hello, hello, I am Amy, Amy Vice reporting live from Istanbul, Turkey. <laughs> Mm. And then um, the next one is Jackie. Where are you calling from, Jackie? Hi, I'm calling from Moore Park, California again. <laughs> like, it really is a call. I mean, if you click the link, that's still calling from, you know. And, I'm, I'm consistent. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> nothing has changed since 2007. I'm nothing. She, absolutely. She is nothing. still in Moore Park, California, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is, it's funny, I guess um, Marisa and and, and um, Jacqueline are, you know, still living in the same, you know, city. So, Marisa, what about you? I'm in Chicago, Illinois, right down the street <laughs> from, from Rodell. <laughs> We're actually neighbors, pretty I, much. So. I know. It really, yeah. yeah. Just so you know, guys, uh, Marisa and I are like um, three to five minute walk. Walk. It's that close. I think less. Now we go to, we're going to go now backwards. Now it's like, now that I have Marisa here, we're going to start with our first, our first topic. The past is the past. So just tell us about where you're born, you know, about your, you know, about your background and by background, look at me and being like mm, politically correct, like what your background is and, you know, where you went to school, you know, just prior to, I guess, prior to, uh, prior to now. Okay. Um, and by the way, if you see a strange pillow here, that's my dog. I guess he wants to be in the interview too. Grizzly. Uh, show Grizzly. Can you show Grizzly quick? I mean, I'll disturb him from his bone chewing, but this is my puppy Grizzly. Oh. So, all right. You, you do your thing, babe. Okay. So um, I was born and raised in Chicago and um, I went to Chicago Public Schools growing up, went to a great school called the Merritt School of Music here in the city that really piqued my interest for um, music and classical singing. Also did all the school musicals. So I really just fell in love with the art of performing at that time. Um, my mom is from Thailand and she's kind of like a stage mom, tiger mom type you could say. Yeah. So I was really shy in high school. And uh, she said, hey, you should go and enter this pageant. It's a scholarship pageant. Uh, you'll get up on stage, get to do your singing. And, um, you know, you probably won't win, but if you do, you'll get some scholarship money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, long story short, I ended up competing. And on my last year of eligibility, I won Miss Illinois. Um, but before that time, <laughs> before that time, I got my undergrad at Cleveland Institute of Music in Ohio, also competed in Miss Ohio for two years. And um, and then I most recently got my master's at DePaul University for opera. So yeah, and uh, as Rodell said, I'm an opera singer, soprano, and also a guitarist and singer songwriter. So yes. uh, I had, by the way, you guys should check out uh, Marisa. She was my guest uh, last week. Uh, she, you know, so there's an episode. So uh, yet, uh, now we go to, wait, oh my God, these, this mouse. There Hi, I Jackie. Hi. Oh, Jackie, Hi. you, tell us about you. <laughs> about me. Um, okay, I grew up in Oxnard. I went to public schools too, went to Cal Lutheran for my undergrad. And I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do with life. I wanted to be a lawyer. I thought I wanted to be an actress. And then my voice teacher at the time said, opera is the Olympics of singing. So I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> like It's a nice challenge. You get to study history and, and I love classical music. So I tried it out. And then my senior year in college, I had always watched the, I was just telling a friend earlier, I always watched the Miss America pageant growing up, you know, and watched all the talents, watched all of the 
interview mm -hmm. questions. And these were, these were like the powerhouse women to like model yourself after. So I thought, why not? I'm, I'm going to see if I can do that. And the people in the local pageant were the absolute loveliest, most special people in the world. And I, I went to Miss California, got in the top 10, said, okay, that's cool. And then uh, a year later, I was like, I, I think I could, I think I could do really well and entered the same local, won the title and had a really awesome year. And uh, did, had fun at Miss America. It was the year where they did a small reality show. I think, did they do that for you? No, it, but by the way, I looked it up. It was 2008. It's the it's the year after you. So the 2007 winners who competed for 2008. Yeah. That's the one because I wanted to make right. sure that nine, none of you did the... the uh, I'm glad that you guys did not do it. I, but I did. Time, I saw yeah. it again. Like, oh, my God. It was... Anyway. It's ah. tough. It's tough. No, the, ours was only just like a weekend in Santa Monica. They were shipped off for a month. And it, it's... They, I mean, they were still trying to figure out their brand. I think they're still trying to kind of like figure out how Miss imagine, America. Well, imagine the bachelor without the bachelor. So basically it's just so women in the house. No, really. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, yeah. Nobody. Right. And the, it's like they were trying, I felt sometimes trying to incite like, you know, chattiness. Exactly. And it's like, dude, we're, this, these are Miss America contestants. We're all here to support each other. This is not catty. This is about like inspiring yeah. and empowering people. And so, then, um, and then we, and then you did uh prior prior to the present you did uh of course you toured with phantom of the opera tell us about yeah, little opera. <laughs> oh right so i went to usc hey what's up ryan i saw you ryan say hi <laughs> ryan and i went to usc together uh, i did my master's a couple years of the doctorate and then i went and did yeah oh thanks friend um and then uh did the whole opera singer slash musical theater routine for uh, about three years Landed the job, uh, Carlotta in the Phantom of the Opera, toured the country for three years. Loved it, absolutely loved it. And then I'm back here in Los Angeles, trying my hand at television and teaching singing right now on Zoom. And I love it so very much. Awesome, that's awesome. So, now we go to Amy. Tell us about your stuff. Oh, so the past. Okay. Um, also, I went to public school, public schools. In Where were you born and raised, Amy? God. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was born in Brunswick, Maine, and um, in the same, I lived and grew up in the exact same town, um, graduated in a really small class. My uh, town's name is Lisbon. You probably have never heard of it, except, have, so. fun fact, <laughs> it's um, where Stephen King went to high school. So I had um, teachers who were his classmates. And um, I had his English teacher and she gave me a D on a paper. I was so frustrated with her. Um, <laughs> now she knows. <laughs> did I dive too far into the past? Just tell me. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's um, yeah, so after that, I had connections to Oklahoma. My, half of my family is there. So I went and I did my undergrad at the University of Oklahoma. And I have always been living in this sort of like... Um, I don't know, this this kind of like in-between world between opera and musical theater. I initially went, auditioned for um, a scholarship to go and, and be in the musical theater department. They said, oh, you kind of sound more like an opera singer. And I was accepted into the classical um, music program I studied. And, um, and it was just like the thing for me. Although I always had a really special place in my heart for musical theater. After that, um, I graduated. I went to the Oberlin Conservatory and continued. I did an artist diploma. Um, yeah, and after that, I auditioned. Now we, now we were go like, to this. Now huh? we go to this. It's all about the present. The future is here. So what? Where are you? Where are you now? And what? What? what what's your uh, uh, current uh, plans for the future? Me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, currently, I am in Istanbul, Turkey. I had initially moved to, looks like I'm going to go a little into the past because you're probably thinking, well, yeah. how did you end up in Turkey? Well, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I was always living in this sort of like in, bet in between world, musical theater or classical music. Auditioned for a lot of um, classical music companies, 
I auditioned for a lot of musical theater and I just never found that niche. So I decided I would move to Europe and try my hand there. I got there and realized that singing professionally wasn't for me. And, um, and it was just like an awesome moment to finally have that, that closure to be more of, I appreciate this. I mm -hmm. loved doing it. I loved the journey that it took me on because it took me to Miss America. Um, I competed um, once in Maine and Maine's an open state. So that's how you can um, go and win once and then move on to Miss America. We don't have locals, um, unfortunately, although we're trying to build our program. So the future, I'm here. I've been teaching, not music. I've been teaching um, four-year-olds in a preschool. And um, I spent the last three years teaching first grade reading. Oh, um, nice. My husband and I thought we were moving to the US and instead of moving, cause this was right when the pandemic hit, um, we decided to put um, our plans on pause. And now I'm actually selling Turkish rugs and vintage items that I've just been finding on my travels. So singing brought me over here to Turkey um, where I met my husband and uh, that's that's the present and, and the future we're we're, we're selling turkish rugs right now maybe we'll move to the u.s yes we'll, we'll don't, do don't do it <laughs> don't do it right now now we go to, now we go now we go to uh marisa it's all about all right. what you're currently doing and what you have plans uh right now um Okay, Amy, it's so cool hearing your story, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and similarly to Jackie, I am also teaching a lot on um, Zoom University. Um, so I'm teaching voice, piano, and guitar lessons. And I really only started teaching at the beginning of this year, and then everything, you know, hit the fan. And I had to go um, virtually with lessons. But it has ended up working out beautifully. Um, I have students all over the country, and I decided to launch a business called The Virtual Virtuoso, um, which features a number of talented teachers. And, you know, we teach um, students of all ages and um, varying degrees and different instruments and, and voices. Um, so that's kind of my project right now. Um, in addition to when the world opens up again, I'll be back to doing singing auditions and trying to navigate through, you know, the opera, musical theater pop singing world. Um, and I'm also music director at a church here in Chicago. So yeah, I'm, I have my hands full, especially with my, uh, my child, my third child it's here. Nice, it's so. nice to have, it's nice to be distracted, but in a very productive way. That's so, kind of how I am. Yeah. Distroductive. There you go. You're very distroductive. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Oh my God, I'm so funny. Am I funny? Hi, Jackie. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> it's all about the present. Future is here. So, what do you have right now? And then, do you do you have any um uh, projects going on? What's going on? Oh, um, sorry, I already kind of jumped the gun on that. I'm you know teaching voice over Zoom, and I I love it. It's great because you know everybody stays in their PJ pants and and socks. When they sing. Oh my god, I am wearing shorts under here. So just so you know, I mean <laughs> shorts, not pants. I love Thank it. Thank God. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm. I've got. I if if you're on the coasts in a major city, I have a Daya cheese commercial out right now where I'm a conductor and then I I do something. Yeah, it's I mean, so cool. It's I'm fun. Vegan, so I I, 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 yay, yay! It's good food. Um, I I just had a a, a, a lifetime, a tiny part in a lifetime movie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, yeah, guys, I know. Yeah, I'll slow yeah. down soon. <laughs> One of these days, I'll I'll take it easy. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm teaching and I'm I'm doing a, a job audio editing for virtual choirs, that um I, literally virtualchoir.net, um and I just help with everything from I don't do the mass LA Master Crawl, but the company does everything from that to mm -hmm. churches, universities, and so it's it's been really nice to be a part of that music process and and still be involved in tech, which I am coming to love very much. Oh, now we go. This is the part where I go to. It's called. Actually, I'm gonna put you guys on the uh, on on here on the side. Look at that. I have to do this all. I always say I have to do this 
moving myself, got to remove my logo so they see Jackie. <laughs> um, I call this um, follow the memory big road. Follow the memory big road. <laughs> so we're going to just look at pictures of like, you know, you know, their winning moments. And you guys got to figure out who this is and what's going on. Mm -hmm. Aww. Aww. Oh, Tony, that is such a sweet picture. Yes, that is Amy. Oh my God, look at that crown. Yeah, yeah. and my grand. <laughs> and then now this is that mm. Jack. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> Has to be you. Yeah, that's me. It's like you know, I had to like double check that. It's like, is that her? Is that her? I, I had know. Other no, I had to look. We're at all and I see. Were <laughs> yeah, and oh then we went God. to Miss America and blonde and it's too like fan. it's like yeah. such a classic. I won. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I bombed the question. I was certain I didn't win. So, oh. and then yeah. this is Marisa. There you go. Mm. Kind of obvious, but the eye. And your the gown, head. by the way, Marisa. Your gown is has the same color as 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 um. I think Jackie's in, is it California one? It's like, it's blue. It's like, blue. Blue? it yeah. looks Her, still over here. So, you know, very uh -huh. faint, but it's like a uh, blue okay. illusion gown. Mm. Don't, it is, yeah. don't, girls, I asked for yeah. you, you for this, but you know, I got to do this only because, and I tried looking, we, we tried, I talked to Amy about looking out for this, but this is, mm. ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the only place you'll actually see it again. Okay. And this is Miss California. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, Look at that baby. tan, girl. <laughs> I know. That tan. That hair. I see <laughs> it. That tan. I'm sure I, it. That I think it is. Like the bathing suit is floating. <laughs> I know. It's like a green <laughs> screen. <laughs> and this is Marisa. <laughs> right here. Yes, woman. <laughs> I know I did so. And then we have questions about that later on. So yeah. that's it. Now we go to... Now I can actually like, you know, do this now. And then, you know, people, you, any of you can actually answer this. First question now is Atlantic City, Las Vegas and uh, Atlantic City again. So just so people know, um, Amy, Amy competed in Atlantic City in 2000, wait, 2005. And then uh, for Miss America, of course. And then Jacqueline competed in 2007 in Las Vegas. And then uh, Marisa competed in 2015 in Atlantic City. So tell us about your experience on each of these cities. And there's a story behind these later. So what about, let's start with Amy about Atlantic City. Oh my gosh. So we were the last year to compete in Atlantic City in this series of the entire tradition of Miss America, mm -hmm. right before um, the pageant moved elsewhere. And it was, it was magic. Um, you get to meet all of the people that come out on the boardwalk every year. And there are different festivals and their own little internal competition. People support the pageant so much. We um, went to shopping malls and People came from all over. Somebody gave me a St. Christopher's medal just because, you know, I was a, an opera singer and traveling and they happened to just like my profile in the Miss America program book. I mean, there is a history in Atlantic City and I was, I, I feel really lucky to have experienced that. Yeah. What about you, uh, Jackie, in Las Vegas? Yeah, we were in Vegas. I think it was the second and maybe the last year that we were in Vegas. Um just they were trying something new and it was very flashy extremely flashy i wish we had the you know the history of atlantic city you know i think they went straight back to it in that beautiful uh runway one really cool memory is that we were transported from been, like underground on a glass platform that was raised up to like the the mall level and then we did a runway Oh, not, like, wow. just, like an appearance, <laughs> right? It was so nuts. Yeah, but I, I think I'm sure there were other great memories, but I just remember that. Who gets raised up from a glass platform? But yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Singers. Singers sometimes. What about you, Marisa? So I have to agree with Amy that <clears throat> being in Atlantic City, like there is just a very special 
feeling about that and you know um, being on the boardwalk and just exploring that area with all the history which is where it all began um you know and there's that miss america statue there where she's like holding the crown you can like a lot of people will just like go under it and like post a picture um but you know one special memory that i also have for my year is we actually did a trip to dc right before and then they flew us on a charter like plane or jet or something to Atlantic City from there. Um, and it was really cool. They were really trying to promote STEM education my year. Um, my platform was STEAM, of course, which I know we'll get to later. Um, so I don't think they liked that because they were all like very heavy <laughs> STEM my year. But we went to um, the Department of Education. We went um, to the White House and did a tour. Um, I actually got in trouble for taking a selfie with someone that was like a big Illinois fan. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I guess cameras weren't allowed or phones weren't allowed for pictures at that time in the White House. But um, but yeah, so I mean, every year is different. It just goes to show that um, things change up every single year and they're still changing. I mean, massively this year didn't even happen, which is sad. Um, but yeah, every every girl, every class has a very different experience, which is kind of cool. So my experience is I just won Miss America at uh, the... Capitol Hill just that happened earlier, you know, got the votes of the eyes and the nose. I got so many eyes. I got this crown and I was just voted as Little Miss Fucking Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> that is my title, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> anyway, I know there's so much going on. I don't know. I was saying, oh my God. It's like, it's like, yeah, I'm doing the show because I think People would actually love to, love to see this right now. Trust yeah. me, everybody would love to see this. Now, going Just back- Just don't ask us current events questions now, please. I don't I want know, to I answer know. a single so one. These are, these, these are just- please. <laughs> shout, out, shout, out, shout out the answers. This is like in total, like pageant. And by, by, by this question, I meant, I mean ev everything. It doesn't have to be like a major one. So it could be a local one, a school one, because that's what it's all about. How many times have you each competed? Start counting. <laughs> like 50,000 if we're not just counting the state level. Exactly. So I think you know how you know how it is like you know, if somebody says how many how many co singing competitions have you done? Well, if I if I count the ones from competition, not auditions, competition. It's easier for me to count the singing one kind of like, oh, when I was uh, when I was back in the Philippines as a pop singer, it's like one, two, three. So there's four there and then this, that kind of thing. But for you, well, how, how many how many times have you guys competed? Even as early as like probably like, I don't know, nine years old. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? So at least <laughs> there's a background there. What about you, Jackie? Um, In pageants? Uh, yeah. the, the the local, the state, and then the local in the state and, and Miss America, so. Five. What about you, Amy? Yeah. Um, so Maine is not a pageant state. I didn't grow up um, doing pageants. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, <I> yeah. <laughs> Some people that, you know, wow. a lot of not people that competed with in, this, in the South. Oh my God, if this I mean, they have that culture. If this were golf, you would have won. Uh. <laughs> so I did um, once for Miss Maine and then Miss America. Okay. What about you? Wow. <laughs> Me? Yes, Marisa. You? Um, I, competed you? At, <laughs> I competed at the state level six times. So Miss Ohio twice. I was second runner up one year. Um, but then I've also competed at USA, like Illinois, USA. I was first runner up there like two years ago. Um, I've done the Illinois Teen USA a couple of times. I did the Miss Songkran Thai pageants a couple of times. So when I said 50,000, I was, you know, pretty accurate. That's pretty cool. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And you're very, very active with the organizations as well. So that's all. I still am. Yeah. So, okay. Now this question, were there Mezzo or Alto <laughs> in Miss America candidates? By the way, these, all of my guests are Sopranos, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, no, they're not allowed. So <laughs> no. 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 no, my Miss New Mexico, I think no, I think she was a soprano, but she did the uh she did an aria from Carmen. Uh, oh Carmen, mm, yeah. Oh see, see okay. this thing. So they She's were soprano. sopranos, but they would sing like Abanera if they want to. Listen, honey, you sing yeah, actually. You, I sang VC freaking Darte. I'm not a I was not a Tosca at, at 24. <laughs> yeah, Marita, <laughs> 
Marisa was the only one who sang the fuck that she belonged in. <laughs> Jackie sang VC Darte and freaking Amy sang Il Bel Sogno. Listen, all that trying to get me to sing Nessun Dorma, so. <laughs> <laughs> the team, my you ear. Them, you lose them. All, all right, right. Yeah, she sang now, that. Miss, yeah, Miss America's Miss Outstanding. Question now. What are some of the misconceptions about pageants? Uh, let's start with Amy. Um, gosh, I guess um, one of the misconceptions about pageants or maybe pageant girls is that um, we're all catty and really um, we're just so supportive of, of other women. Oh, okay. And, you know, we, we really understand and, and appreciate our, our women friendships and that, um, you know, you can't really get to where you want to be if you don't help others around you. And there's just this, you know, really, really special sisterhood that um, develops within pageants and you stay in touch for life. Mm. My best friend is the Miss New Mexico that I had met and she took me under her wing in New York City and she didn't have to, um, but we had that, that connection of being in the pageant and we we're like-minded people. And I think that that's what's really interesting is when you compete at Miss America, you are surrounded by a lot of like-minded people. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Marissa's <laughs> Grizzly like throw that toy up. <laughs> Anyone want to add to that or? Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. So now. Yeah. yeah. So what about this? How does Miss America differ from Miss USA? Uh, Marisa, you want to answer that? Yes. Um, well, okay. As someone who actually has competed in both systems, um, I can say that Miss USA to me is more about the sex appeal and like the model-esque type of chick. And it was actually, the franchise was owned, or I should say the business was owned by Donald Trump for several years. So if that says anything about it, it is run as a business. Whereas the Miss America organization has always been, well, not always, but it was a swimsuit competition back in the day. I mean, like in the 1920s, but in modern times, it has always been a scholarship program all about empowering women. And we have a talent and we have to be pretty smart. And um, it's more about, you know, celebrating a young woman and her accolades, whereas USA is more about celebrating a young woman's, you know, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> accolades. And, and, <laughs> or you all good. Anyone want to add to that? You're all good. <laughs> That's good. Um, I'm curious, like the job for Miss America or like Miss California or the States, um, it's a full time job uh, and, and it's a lot of uh, work for our platform in, in speaking tours. Uh, is that similar to the USA uh, title holder system? And, and maybe that's also a misconception that people don't know about pageant girls is that it, it is a full-time job and it's not just, you know, swimsuits ah, and, and, yeah. and runways and, you know, parades and stuff. It really is a full-time job of speaking. Like, I do know that USA state title holders technically don't have to give up school or work or whatever it may be. But I think in the Miss America org, it depends on the state. So I also had to take my year off from, wow. you know, school and work and everything. I don't know wow. about you, Amy, if that was the case. Well, I had just been accepted to Oberlin and I would have had to give up my scholarship. So my state worked with me and let me defer a semester. Oh, that is Great. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're a scholarship organization. So yeah. it was just really wonderful that they honored that for me. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Uh, now, my question is like maybe, uh, and, and I'll, I'll direct this to uh, Jackie first. With the differences between Miss America and Miss USA, what was your stance on the bathing suit competition? What was your stance during that? And how did you feel about it at that time compared to now? That is an excellent question. Because at that time, I had to kind of psych myself into it. Um, it, it the, the minute I got on the Miss America stage, I don't know about you ladies, but it had been six months since I had won uh, Miss California. Because oh. they it was just something with the timing. And so I hadn't done anything pageant related for half a year. So yeah. when I went back on the stage and it was all about the presentation, the look, the the, the swimsuit, it um, honestly, it just didn't feel right because it didn't feel like it matched the job. I was never in my swimsuit uh, as Miss California. There was nothing that had to do with that. But what had to do with it and the way that I got myself into it was how comfortable are you in the absolute most uncomfortable situation you will ever be in, in your life. Can you still yeah. hold yourself strong mm -hmm. and with grace? And can you be terrified, but still smile 
and say, nope, I'm going to shine through this. And it's like, if you, if you can do that, you can, you can do the job Aww. because be so many times you're terrified. Yep. <laughs> Anyone want to add? I'll add. Um, <laughs> so, well, I agree that it's not a crucial component of doing the job of Miss America. I do feel like it's a huge part of the tradition and a huge part of the ratings of the television, you know? So I was happy to do it my year because my, um, actually it was like three months after Miss Illinois. So I didn't have, you know, <laughs> I, or maybe actually only two months after. So, you know, I was able to get in that good shape in a quicker amount of time. Um, but also like Jackie said, it's about the confidence and just what you exude. Um, I've heard people say that swimsuit is one from the neck up. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. You know, you see it in a woman's eyes, the, the empowered feeling. So I was a fan of swimsuit. I was sad to see it go. Yeah. I would like to add, I did not have the best figure out there. I was an Oompa Loompa and I had oh, my, oh, my no, pantlets, like the, the, um, the little padding, my padding was showing, my thighs Aww. touched and I still want audience text because it's yeah. one from the darn neck up and I was yes. laughing. Yes. Uh, I know that smile. She had the smile. You got it, girl. Yes. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. So um, um, I didn't enjoy a swimsuit. I, <laughs> no, because um, I don't have a curvy figure at all. Um, I, I'm just like this. And so I remember like shopping for my swimsuit and it was like, oh, we have to find a suit that gives you a figure. You're going to wear a one piece because we can make it cinch your waist. And and it was just like this thing. I'm very, I'm thin, but yeah. it was just like, oh, I didn't want to do it. Then we found out Speedo was our corporate sponsor. And so we had all bought a swimsuit that made our bodies look re the way we wanted them to look. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then they made us choose from the Speedo sponsored swimsuits. And that was the first time we were able to wear a string bikini. I wore a one piece. Oh. And um Oh, and I'm just like, I'm so glad, Rodell, that you couldn't find one online. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I do know look. that this is part of the tradition. And I yeah, was happy to get up and do it and just like play that part. That's just another part I played. Yeah. yeah that's and that, you know, like just smiling and yeah. making it work. So I didn't way, trip, guys, thank God. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's so funny. Uh, when I saw, when I watched to see, I only saw could remember when I met Jackie, it was after she competed. So I saw Amy's and I also saw Marisa's, you know, the show during that time. And when I saw Amy's, we love it because during that time, the cameraman loves Amy because the whole show, you see Amy everywhere. Uh, did you see that? Did you watch well, it? I did. I watched it. There was, this was, this was, Okay, so backstage, a lot of us were feeling very uncomfortable by, um, this was kind of like right at the time when Miss America started to be filmed like a reality TV show, but not, it, you know, hadn't really done that yet. And so we were really afraid. We were looking around like, oh, do you mm -hmm. think they've bugged the entire place? And, you know, are they going to show us? We, we just didn't know. We were stressed, worried. Hindsight is kind of 2020, but... Steven um, says think, you look amazing, by the way. So look at that. Oh, oh. Thanks, Steven. Um, I'd gone and I, I was talking with the production crew and asking them about, you know, like what's going on. This is kind of what the girls are saying. And I think we kind of developed a relationship and they showed a lot of pictures of me. That, that really, was, that was, was really... I mean, I was looking for you, but it's not like you're on the side. No, they were actually like, oh, there's Amy again. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is again. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now for the next question, like, let's see what we have in the question. Now, this is now we're doing a one person at a time. I guess you already, you already can answer this earlier in case, you know, okay. you want to reiterate it. Now living in Istanbul, yes. Turkey, aside from family and friends, what do you miss uh, most about the Miss America organization family? Um, gosh, I, I really miss um, being able to be in the state of Maine. I miss being able to help. Um, it seems wow. like all of us from Maine have left and moved elsewhere for work or whatever. And we have a really great program that we're trying to grow. So I I miss being there. I miss giving back. Um, I would love to just be able to find 
other girls to compete and have the experience that I had, which was a really, really positive one. Yeah. yeah. What about, oh, uh, wait. Oh, no. What am I doing? What am I doing for Jackie? Now, we want. I want to know what your experience was being in the top 10 because that's, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shoot. It's like, what, what, what was that? How was that? experience that feeling of like they, I, I think there was a there was a, a picture that I saw of you like reacting to I think being in the top 10 or something yes yeah that's yeah. the one right yeah, yeah I'm like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, awesome. that is genuine surprise yeah. um I'd had a fever I actually had to miss a day of, of rehearsal because I had about 104 fever I got so super sick oh, yeah. they pumped me full of like b12 b like I was like out of my, oh my mind during the interview so by the time it it got to the the final telecast i was just kind of like okay i'm i'm here and i was the last one called so i was just like oh okay everybody's here there's so many people here that could be miss america right now and so when they called me it was i i think i might have mouthed like holy smokes but it looked more like like you know I didn't know. It was very pageanty, like, oh, <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I'm just getting better. Wait, that was awesome. I, have, I have to say, I, I, I don't know about you ladies, but I, the first time I did it, I did the tanning beds and I just feel like I probably gave myself skin cancer. So the second time around I said, no, I'm going to do this on my own. And I, I just did the, the, the fake like rub in lotion, uh, you, you know, fake tans, mm -hmm. I did a spray tan and it, didn't dry in time. <laughs> and so I had holes all over oh. my body. But so by the time of the telecast, you know, like Friday night was our, our final uh, prelim night. We had the day off. And then by what, what was it? Sunday night for the telecast, I had all of these blotchy holes all over. I'm like, what if I'm going to be on television? So we took the Sally Hansen airbrush legs. The darkest one they had was the only one that would cover it. Oh. And me and Miss Michigan, Angela Corsi, we just sprayed ourselves buck naked oh backstage, God. just sprayed ourselves. So we looked even, hence why I am, wow. I am That's so why, dark. Okay, so there was a story behind that. There I, was I, a story. Wait, wait, I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember Jackie being that tan. So no. there was, you know. So it was so not I was out of my purpose. mind. Yeah, I was just loopy and tan and yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Marisa, what was something you've learned from and other from uh, from and other? Oh my god, I need to stop these typos. From other fellow candidates each time you have done the competition. Something mm -hmm. you've taken away because every time you do it, you know, I want to know it's like when we sing competitions in singing. You know, oh, I know what I did wrong. I know, oh, I know what I've learned. Oh, I actually picked up something from a colleague. So tell us about your experience from that. Well, Riddell, since you mentioned that, I do feel like each time you compete, you learn something about yourself. And like you're saying, like something that you do wrong, something you can improve on. For me, the interview portion was always the scariest thing. So um, each year, you know, I would go into it and be afraid of it. But by the final, time I competed, I was like, all right, this is it. I, I've got this. I've practiced a lot. I practiced a lot with my dad. We just drilled interview questions nonstop um, leading up to it. But as far as learning from other girls, um, I think the other ladies have said that we meet so many inspiring and incredible and driven women in so many different um, walks of life. You know, I never would have met, um, well, first of all, at Miss America, a girl from literally every state around the country, but even at Miss Illinois, there's great diversity there. Girls from Southern Illinois and Central yeah. Illinois. And it's just, it's really cool to um, get to know different people and hear about mm -hmm. their backgrounds and their life stories and kind of like their outlooks on life. So I learned a lot each and every time I competed. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now mm -hmm. we get to show you everyone, uh, you know, something, you know, th they're not just uh, beauty queens, but they're also amazing opera singers. And here's a little ditty for everyone to enjoy. I hope you enjoy. Well, you will enjoy it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. By the way, based on all that singing, we could have our own Lenoxi de Figaro. See, see, Amy could be Barbarina, and then Marisa could be Susanna, and then Jackie could be the Countess, and I could be No so few, cause I song, cause I fuck you. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? No so few, cause I song, cause I fuck you. You know, yeah, that's how you that's how you swear at someone during rehearsal. Anyway, <laughs> oh my God, it's like so, oh beautiful. So whose friend is Heather Lynn? Oh, that's that's awesome. yes. And then Sierra, my friend Sierra says, oh my God, so beautiful. Now, <sighs> we're coming to the end of our show. However, oh wait, there's a new, oh, yes. Okay, we're coming to the end of our show. And I call this, this is a new section called Ram on Ram. <laughs> it's called Random Access Memory. <laughs> On Ram. Now this is now these these are for all of you. I want an answer, okay? The first one is swimsuit, two piece or one piece? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> two. What about you, Jackie? I like this to for you. one piece. One piece. What about you, Amy? Um, I wear two piece now, but yeah, for the pageant, I wear one piece. So I don't know. I'm I'm an in between. What is there an in between one? Like maybe the one where the the thing connects. Yeah, that's a one piece still. No. <laughs> so by, by, by the way, KB Gallagher, you're also lovely. Oh, yay. Aww, yay. And then the next one is, so the next one is, gown, strapless or sleeveless? You know what I mean? Because like, for example, what you're wearing, Jackie, <laughs> is sleeveless. Yes. But if it's a gown like that, that's not strapless. So which no. one would you go with? Strapless or just sleeveless? <laughs> I Very like sleeveless because strapless like always falls down and it's kind of annoying unless you know you have a way to push it up but that's not always what happened to me in Miss America you just keep padding it up so it doesn't fall down so we're back in cut Amy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um well I was taped to the nines <laughs> <laughs> so you prefer I mean, there was fashion tape. tape there was legit duct tape I, I don't know if you girls oh did that. Did you duct tape? Oh, no. I, d I no. had to duct tape. Yeah. Smart. Teach me. <laughs> Do you know about the duct tape? I oh, duct so it's like, for drag, it goes so. like from here to here and then here to here and then up. What? Yeah. And then I had the dress oh, actually like taped to my, my person, like the top part, so it wouldn't slip down. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah I think there's things. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, the next question is chocolate, Hershey's or M&M's? <laughs> mm. mm. <laughs> I mean, that's why it's all M&M's. <laughs> quarantine, don't judge me. <laughs> what about you, Marisa? I, I'm vegan, so I'll oh, go there's, with- there's vegan. There's, oh, we're talking about dark, dark chocolate is vegan. I'll go with diet cheese. Um, <laughs> commercial. So yeah, I'll, I'll pick that. Wait, wait, but isn't dark chocolate vegan? Yeah. Chocolate's actually my favorite food. So dark chocolate, semi-sweet. Well, so so you know, Trader it, Joe's so, has great vegan so chocolate. So do you want M&M's or Hershey's? Which one is it? I'd probably want M&M's. Uh, okay. What about you, Amy? M&M's. Ah, okay. This is an upper one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Which do you prefer? The an aria with a cabaletta or a ternary one? The one with ABA. Yeah, yeah, like handle. Yeah, oh. handle all day. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Amy? <laughs> Capoletta. Uh, I just the ABA. I don't want to be thinking about like which verse am I on while I'm trying to sing, like which you know section because they all sound similar. So you, so, yeah. so you prefer ABA also? No, no I don't. No. Oh, I see. So you two are ABA and, and Amy no, is. No, I don't. I like, I like cabaletas because you get to usually have a soulful. Oh, I get it. Okay, yeah, I, I got confused with your answer, Jackie and Amy. Oh and Amy. <laughs> okay, last one. Okay, last one. Quarantine. No consequences. Binge watch or binge eat? No consequences. Definitely eat. <laughs> that even a question. <laughs> You know how like binge watch where it's like if no binge watch meaning if binge eat meaning you're never gonna gain weight binge watch is you're never gonna get tired or sleepy 
if you want to keep continuing to watch. That's why I said no consequences. And if, you'll never if, lose the hours for a bad series. Exactly. <laughs> That's why it's like, oh, if you were to pick one with no consequences, yeah. binge watch or binge eat. That's why for, I guess for Marisa, it's binge eat. What about you, Jackie? I, I probably, I, I want the hours back. I'm already binge eating. <laughs> oh, okay. What about you, Amy? Binge watch. Oh, yay. Okay. Our, that's, uh, oh, Steven's like, binge watch, binge watch. No, honey. Thank you can only do one. Well, that's the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> that is not fair. You can't do both. Okay. So, uh, oh, wait. I guess we have we have come we have come to the part of our show. Look at that! Oh my God, I covered everything. I can't believe I covered everything. Oh, this is the last one where um every show and Marisa already did this this last week, but maybe she'll come up with a new one. So I, I ask everyone to uh what share words of wisdom for the show. <laughs> And this is the part where we call the wow moment, words <laughs> of wisdom. So, you know, anything really. It could be the pageant. It could be, you know, uh, singing, teaching, um, dealing with the pandemic, you know. I mean, you could talk about what happened today in the U.S. or not. You know, that's we're keeping it, you know, on the on away from that. But it's up, really up to you. Now we're going to start with Amy. Any <laughs> words of wisdom, Amy? Since it's morning there. <laughs> Um, okay, okay, so just, so just recently, recently I've been watching um, it's watching my, my feed, and it seems like a lot of people are implying that we were supposed to have chosen a goal or made intentions for this new year. And um, I thought a lot about that and thought, no, I, I'm just trying to survive. So I guess my words of wisdom that I've been thinking about a little bit right now is just do whatever is making you happy, that's making you tick during this really, really difficult time. You don't have to make an intention. You don't have to make a goal. Just get through this. Oh, what about, and we go to Marisa. Okay, well, um, just because it's been weighing pretty heavy on my heart all day, as probably yeah. all of ours, um, I'm going to just say that times are very polarizing right now in our country, obviously. It was an election year and everything, but um, I would say just please don't be so quick to um, villainize someone for having like a slightly different view or thought process than you, because, you know, we're all human. We're all trying out here. And, um, you know, it's a time that we could use more acceptance and shoot, I was going for the world peace thing, but that's not what I'm going for. Um, <laughs> but since it wasn't brought up, but, but no, just to try to be a little bit accepting and empathetic if possible. And I'm definitely trying to do the same thing myself. Oh. And Hmm. Hello. Um, I'm just going to piggyback on the whole uh, world peace idea. Uh, one positive that's come out of uh, this whole mess is accepting everyone for where they are. Is mm -hmm. saying, yes, we're, we're making goals. But you know what? If you haven't, that's totally okay. And if we can take that forgiveness and compassion, that self-compassion uh, into the world when it opens up, and to each other in our differing beliefs. I think that openness will create uh, connection. So That's awesome. And before we go, and the new Miss America. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it you? No, no. Oh my God, there was one. Oh my God. Oh, I forgot one question. I'm I'm sorry. I gotta ask you guys this. Oh you're gonna tell us that one of us won and no. now ask us another question. No. Sorry, it's the it first runner up. The huge. Runner. It's the huge. There was one. There was one, okay? I forgot. I have to ask this. It's a very important question, okay? Great. Great. Um I don't have time to type this, but it's like, this is like the last question. It's funny. It's like the last question. Top three right here. In 2015, Miss Philippines Pia Vortzbach was crowned Miss Universe, but not without controversy. Steve Harvey made a mistake in reading the card and announced Miss Columbia as the winner. Yeah. With Co Miss Columbia's crown already worn and walking down the runway, Steve came back out and retracted his statement. 
admitted his mistake and announced the correct information that Miss Philippines is the new Miss Universe. Now, this is the question. What would you what would have gone through your mind and how would you have felt if you were either of those ladies? Who wants to tackle that question first? Oh. That's just a sign of the, the, the transient nature of life. It's like you know, that that it life gives as it takes. And we're the same person, whether we have that crown or afterwards. Yes, it'll be different circumstances and we'll have different experiences that exactly. next year, but we're still the same person with or without that crown. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. At that moment, I would be thinking that jerk <laughs> about Steve. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but just in the heat of the moment, um, maybe yeah. after reflection, I would arrive at a similar place but that's why I ask if you were either of those ladies it's like you know for me I'm just saying for me I miss Columbia wait I didn't win I mean all that frustration and then for for Pia and she's Filipina and it's just how you know like I guess because I could relate as Filipinos as, as a Filipino as well but in any and as a person you're like oh I didn't win wait I won the first thing that would come to mind is like Oh my God, I feel, I feel bad for Colombia. Like Columbia, she, already, yeah. you know, she, she wasn't even thinking about herself. She she has to because as a, as a winner, as a Miss Universe, you have to 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 you know to portray your no no to to hold your title. But at the same time, you're thinking, how do? Oh my God, I I have to be sympathetic of what just happened to my colleague. Yes, but you know what I mean. But wouldn't that I be a that. real Miss Universe that cares about the other? Yeah. yeah that's I think true. I saw that in her eyes, to be honest. Right. Bring it up. Like she did have that expression. You're like, oh my God. I, I like, yeah, it was, it was just anyway. It was beautiful. Was, anyway. Um, so yeah. on that note, thank you ladies for, for um, <laughs> joining me in tonight's show. And wait, oh, before I go, look at that. Wow, man. Oh, it's funny. Wow, man. <laughs> I was hoping you asked my question. I can't ask the question, Sierra, because you know this is not the this is not the politics. Uh, oh, <laughs> I know, I but I know Sierra, so it's like you know what? Or in the comments. By the way, I'm actually having um, Sam Raimi here, like after a break that I do, and we are gonna touch. We are gonna touch politics. I promise that. <laughs> He, he already like said yes to the politics stuff. So on that note, I'd like to thank ev each and every one of you for joining, for, for saying yes to this, for doing this. You know, it's uh, it's my third to the last show before my live show, before I, I take a two-week uh, winter break. Oh, look at me for my season two or whatever. But, you know, <laughs> so thank you again for everyone, Jackie, Marisa, and Amy. And on that note... <clears throat> I like to sing the theme <clears throat> to Miss America. Here they are, Miss America. <laughs> <laughs>